Thank you for tuning in once again to the voices of the true Israelites, where we are kicking off the 144,000 of all the tribes of Israel with that genetic bloodline. I'm your host, Brother Kev. For questions or comments, you can give us a call at 773-737-3539 or 773-469-8884. And then you can also give us uh, email at voicesof at gmail.com. That's all lowercase. Also, we, we're going in, the, we're international. And that's video, uh, Google Video. And you can give us uh, a keyword, which is Voices of the True Israelites. And also, we're holding classes on Fridays at 6 p.m. and Saturdays at 1 p.m. And now let's get to this panel. To the right of me, say your name, sir. Brother A. Taylor, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. And to the left of me, at starting at the end. Uh, Brother Singleton. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And you, sister? Sister Curtis, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. And now I would like to introduce to you that international biblical Bible teacher, teacher of teachers, Brother Sir Edward. All right, I want to say so long, so long, and thank you again there, Brother Kevin, the host of the Voices of the True Israelites. So long, so long. All right, and so long to the whole panel of Voices of the True Israelites. Now, we left off on the greatest mystery ever told. See, this whole world is out of order because everything is out of order. Now, we got, you know, people talking out there and found the bones of the one that called Jesus. That's right. It might be right. so. But we're going to find out the only reason why people make statements of finding bones of anybody is because the, the royal genetic bloodline Israelites is not telling or saying anything. What we want to do is look at a little prophecy, and we're going to take a look at a whole lot of things along the way of looking at some things. So what I want to do is open the lesson up with Sister Curtis in the book called The Book of the Hebrews. We're going to take a look at something in the 12th chapter of the book of the Hebrews. And we're going to see just why we have failed so far as a people. And what we got to do to come back to get back to our proper perspective. So we want to look at the Hebrew book, really called the book of the Israelites, chapter 12. And we're going to look at verse 6. We're going to look at um, 12 verse I tell you what, let's look at one, two, then skip down to verse six. Let's take a look, let's take a look glance at something. Hebrews chapter 12, Sister Curtis, pick up the verse one, two, and skip down to six. Wherefore, see, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Mm -hmm. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking until wise W.H. rephrases Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Yes. Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the tree, rephrases the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand 
of the throne of wise WH who praises God. Oh, so really, we really can stop right here and go home because when we talk with he on the right hand of wise WH, we can stop right here and say, well, we need to teach about somebody finding anything about this guy. We just found out right here, talking to the Israelites, he's on the right hand. So if you're on the right, right hand of the father, then where you send the father at? Down six foot under or in a tomb? See, book, we can stop right there. But we can mm. go a little further. <laughs> verse 6, what it say in verse 6? For whom the creator rephrases, Lord, loveth, he chasteneth. So that's one of the greatest mysteries. If he love you, the first thing he going to do is what? Chasten. Go ahead and read. And scourges every son whom he received. So everybody coming in to wise double H the son, he going to get after you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead mm -hmm. and read. Seven. If we endure chastening, wise WH rephrases God, dealeth with you as with son. Yes. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Now watch step nine, verse eight now. But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards now, and not sons. Now see, that's one of the greatest mysteries. That's mm. how you become a bastard. Wow. Mm. If you don't endure chastisement, that that's means right. whatever on the table, that's you right. go right. contrary right. to it. So now we can sit there and think about a whole lot of bastards. <laughs> <laughs> a bastard means one that would not endure sound doctrine. Mm. Right. When okay. the truth is ripped before them, they'll come up with a whole nother label to the truth. So we're going to identify a bastard in this lesson, but we found out one thing. You got to endure <laughs> chastising. That's right. But if you That's cannot right. be corrected, then you are a bastard. Ain't got mm. nothing to do with between the sheets. Mm. It's yeah. in between your ears. That's right. That's right. Now, Brother A. Taylor, what we want to do, we want to take a look at how you got to come in to receive the word of YHWH the Son. And before we get there, Sister Curtis, grab that first uh, Bible you see right there in that little blue book. And let's lay a couple words down on the table. Turn where it says text of grammar tone. Because we're going to be using words that we want to make sure you know exactly where we're coming from. Turn it to the back where it says text of grammar tone. And what's the name of that Bible you read out of first? The Holy Bible Dictionary Concordance. So it's the Holy Bible Dictionary and Concordance. Look at what it says, text of grammar tongue. Let's see what that's saying. Brother, sing it to have me Proverbs 30, verse 5 and 6 waiting on me. Text of grammar tongue. Yes. The four letters YHWH forming the secret, sacred de name of the supreme deity. Whenever the words Lord and God appear in large and small capital letters in the Old Testament, the original Hebrew text uses Y-H-W-H. That's right. Oh, so That's the reason you use right. Y-H-W-H, but how many letters they say it is? <laughs> Four letters. So <laughs> otherwise, whatever the way you pronounce it, you, you better be pointing at how many letters? Four, Four letters. letters. Four. Four letters. Now turn over where it says in the Y and tell us what will happen. Where it says Y. What, read the word exactly what it says. Y. Yahweh. Well, wait a minute. Mm. Yahweh. That's what well, well, you mean is, is that that's how you pronounce the four letters? <laughs> no. Well, what happened there? How did it get to be Yahweh? What happened? It's added an A is added in and an E. Oh, so the adding of the A and E. Well, let's see what Proverbs says about that, brother Singleton. Proverbs chapter thirty, verse, verse five. Yes. Every word of Y H W H is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Wait. Six. Add thou not unto his words, right? lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So he said, don't add none to it. So when you add that A and E to it, mm. you now you made the, the, the name that you call the Most High, the Son, paganism, mm. by putting the A and E. And he said, don't do it. It ain't but four letters. Right. That's right. That's Finish up, Sister uh, Curtis. Yahweh, the covenant God. The covenant wise WH rephrases God of Israel. Yes. Wise WH in the original Hebrew, according to the Israelite, rephrases Jewish custom. Because of the reverence, the divine name was not to be spoken. So the Hebrew words for Lord and God were substituted. So that's how I get the word called Lord and God. 
So your Lord God and your and your Yahweh all this paganism. Wow. Because you add all three of them to the four letters. Wow. Right. Look what you did. You see, <laughs> you see what you're going to find out? Yahweh, the Lord, and the God all follow the same thing up on the paganism. Right. He said, That's don't right. add none to the four letters. Now you got six letters. Right. Now you're pronouncing six letters and look at red four. Mm. See? Right. Yes. But I'm going to show you why you're in the condition you're in right now. Uh, Brother A. Taylor, we're going to look right at down at, let's look at, what I say? Let's make it Luke. Let's look at Luke chapter 18. We're going to look at verse 17, backed up with the host, Brother Kevin, and Mark 10, 15. Then back to Sister Curtis at Matthew's chapter 18, 2 through 5. Let's take a look at something real quick. Let's look at... Um, Luke 18, 17, what does it say? Luke 18, 17. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of YHWH as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. So if you don't receive the kingdom as a little child, that means whatever you think and what you believe, you got to receive it as a little child. That's right. That's the right. host, Brother Kevin, Mark chapter 10, 15, what does it say? Mark chapter 10, 15. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of YHWH as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Okay, I tell you what, bag on up to um, you and Mark. Go to uh, Mark again. Let's pick up at, at fifth uh, round by. Let's see. That's good enough. Let's go straight on to Matthews. Let's go on to who I said had that Matthew. Just okay. Curtis. Pick it up at verse 2. Let's see what it said in 2. 18-2. Yeah, 18-2. We 18, want to get an idea of how you got to come into this word. And Brother Singleton had me Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And we have verse 1 waiting on me. 18-2 Matthews. And wise WH rephrases Jesus called a little child unto him. Yes. And set him in the midst of them. 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. For whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. Five. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. So, so that's how you got to enter into this understanding as a little child. And another thing you got to bring to the table because a lot of people like to show up at the camps and they had their big briefcase and they come in the wrong way. And we fit to find out what the wise man tell you how you got to, to deal with this. Ecclesiastes 5.1, Brother Sickness, what do you say? 5.1, Ecclesiastes. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of YHWH and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of food. So That's when right. you come in, mm. you come in with Big ears and what, brother Singleton? Little mouth. So you come in with a little mouth. That's so you're right. not gonna receive something. You want to come in. You want to teach, and you don't even know what's going on. Right. So if you to receive something as a little child, you got to first come in with big ears and little mouth, because you know what you know already before you got there. So our job is to add to you, uh, brother A. Taylor, back up to Jeremiah three fifteen, and you got to. We gonna play. Lead the driving to us. Mm. <laughs> Let's see what it said in Jeremiah 3.15. Jeremiah 3.15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. Yeah, and what their job is. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. But you got to lead the driving to the one that's going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's right. But if you come right. in with big mouth and, and run an alligator station mm. and little ears, they mean you're not going to receive what's supposed to be to you. And you gonna let the people be the Jeremiah three fifteen. Put them on the spot. <laughs> right. They'll take care. Brother Singer, continue. Three. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. Yes. And a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. And yep. that's how we find out exactly where you are when you come in with a lot of words. That's so right. we know what a fool when a fool got a lot of words, that means he got no book open. Right. <laughs> because right. the key to this, uh, Brother Kevin, let me show you the key to this, 12, verse 9, the same book, Ecclesiastes. 12, verse 9, Brother Kevin. 12, see, the key to this understanding is 12, verse 9. 
Let's see what we got here. And moreover, because the preacher was, was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. How you do that? The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. And that which was written. So if a preacher wise, he only going to put it on table. What is what, Brother Kevin? What is written. Go ahead and read. And was upright, even words of truth. So that's how you get the words of truth when you find out what's written. That's right. Now we have to find out what some things that's going to be written. And let's see, can, let's see is your preacher wise or anybody in your organization wise. We're going to back up to uh, Brother A. Taylor. We're going to back up to Numbers. Chapter 15, pick up at verse 15. And let's find out what make you wise anyway. And let's see, do you follow any instructions? Numbers chapter 15, verse 15 and 16. Numbers 15, 15. <clears throat> one ordinance shall be both for you, one of the congregation, and also one for the stranger. Yes. That so join it with you. An ordinance for ever. In your generations, mm -hmm. as ye are, so shall the stranger be before the wise WH. Well, stop it there now. Wait a minute now. Hmm. Look, we just tell these Israelites. He said, as you are. Mm -hmm. So the right. way you are, Israel, the whole world is supposed to fall in up on the as you are. Mm -hmm. That's so right. now, it, so if you acting like somebody else, mm -hmm. you right. have just broke the protocol. Because he let he said the president right now, as you mm -hmm. are. That's right. So share the what? Stranger. stranger. That means I didn't even put a face, I didn't put a name on him. The stranger. That's right. And the stranger, let's put a rabbit out. Let's find out who the stranger is. Oh, yeah. Let's put a rabbit out of that. Um bro, uh, brother Kevin, let's back up to Nehemiah chapter twelve. No, make it chapter nine, Nehemiah. We want to know who is this stranger. We want to get a clear idea of who is the stranger in Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. Let's see, can we find out? Uh, let me run over there in the ninth chapter, verse one, and let's find out who is the stranger, Nehemiah. We want to get a clear idea in the ninth chapter, okay. who is the stranger. And Sister Curtis, what I want you to do I want you to run over to the second Chronicles, and I want to get a second hit on there. All this called the Cadet Ruach. I want to go get a second hit on this stranger mm -hmm. after we read it in Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 1. We want to get a second hit on this stranger. 9-1, Nehemiah, what does it say? 9-1, Nehemiah. Now, in the twenty and fourth day of this month, mm -hmm. the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloth and earth upon them. Yeah. Two, and the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers. Oh, so the children of Israel. So the children of Israel is not the stranger. Mm. They separate themselves from all strangers. Oh, well. So we know the strangers, everybody other then Israel. That's right. So that's, that's right. who the stranger is. So, right. so now we know who the stranger is, everybody other than Israel. That's right. That's so right. he didn't put a name on it. Mm. So he told you as you are, so is the stranger. That's right. right. And the stranger means everybody Anybody. other than Israel. Right. Were well, right. you sinners of Ham, <laughs> the sinners right. of the Japhetites? Right. The stranger means they supposed to be like you, mm. and we're going to find out, and Brother Singleton have me, Galatians, Chapter 2, verse 11. Now, Sister Curtis, I'm looking at 2 Chronicles 6. And I want to look at verse 32. I need me a second witness because out of the mouth of two witnesses, we'll let every word be established. 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 32. What does it say? Moreover, concerning the stranger, which is not of thy people Israel. Oh, we might well stop there. We can leave it right there. Then we find the stranger is everybody other than Israel. That's right. So That's the right. stranger in this book is everybody other than Israel. Go ahead and read a little bit more. But it's come from a far country. Yeah. For the great names sake. And, and when the stranger come, he got to come for the great many names. And it, thy it, mighty Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did he say that? Oh, no. 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 Did he say he got to come for the great many names? No. It don't make no difference what the name will be? He didn't say no. 
the great name. The great name. Oh, oh the stranger for the come right. for the great name. That's Go right. ahead and read. And thy mighty hand. Yes. And thy stretched out arm. Yes. If they come and pray in this house. So now if the stranger come and pray in this house, this house, like a little child. Right. Got the name right, understanding the peoples of the book. That's right. Verse 33, what's going on? Then hear thou from the heaven. Oh, so he ain't going to hear the stranger until mm. he do exactly what he said. He got to get the name right and understand uh, how to pray back toward the land right. of Israel. So he telling them to get a den here. That's right. They got to do this first. Right. So right. this is part of the protocol. That's right. Go That's ahead right. and read. Even from thy dwelling place. Go ahead and read. And do according to all that the stranger called to thee for. Then, then take care of the stranger. Mm. Then you got the, your program that's going on. You see all this great healing going on. Right. But this great healing ain't going according to the way he said it. Right. Which we got is one way. Led by Israel. Wow. And the stranger come in up under the name. Right. He get a right. chance to call on him. Right. And he will hear him. But if he ain't doing this way, then who are blessing you? Read mm. a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> that all people of the earth may know thy name. Uh, to know thy name, come on. And mm. fear thee, as doeth thy people, Israel. Oh, so his people is Israel. Go ahead. Mm. And may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name and wow. it is called by thy, thy name, name. Yeah. so they but one name so a lot of people <laughs> got a lot of names on yeah. on wow. builders and stuff but it ain't but one name right. everything is on the one right. so i don't know how you get so much stuff going on right. and he got on the one and uh back to a taylor for a minute uh, brother singleton let's go back to the 15th chapter again because i want to kind of uh clean up this 15th chapter and we look right at verse number 16 what it say one torah and one manner shall be for you. So one instruction. Torah means instruction. Your God. Mm -hmm. One manner shall be for you. You Israelites. That's right. That's right. And for the stranger that sojourneth with you. And, and for the stranger that joineth with you. So it's not for one way. So if right. we're not doing it the one way. And anybody say they're getting blessing. And they're not doing the one way. Then we know one thing, it's not come from the one that made the heaven and earth that's given this instruction. And now I gotta pull a rabbit out of the hat. Mm -hmm. Let's find out who is giving this instruction. All right. Uh Brother Calvin, let's go to let's go to St. John <coughs> chapter five, verse four and three, and we'll skip down the last two verses. Let's find out who is giving these instructions to Moshe. St. John chapter 5, verse 43. Let's see what it says. I am coming, my father's name. Now, that's one of the greatest mysteries. So the name he came in was who name? My father's name. So he came in the father's name. So whatever the father's name is, that is the name that he came in. That's right. Skip down to verse 46. What happened next? For had you believed Moshe, you would have believed me. Why? For he wrote of me. So what we read back in the first five books when we was reading numbers that the son is instructing the way the Torah is supposed to be written by the pen of Moses. That's right. 47, That's what it right. say? But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my word? Now, he just dropped the bombshell on it. If you don't believe what the Torah is saying, if you say this is done away with, I'm letting you know all this is my instruction. Hmm. Now, Brother Singleton, Galatians chapter 2, Verse 11, because we're going to find out that the chief speaker of the nation of Israel, he's going to mess around and get, get stuck on stupid for a second. But somebody walked over there and checked him. And we're going to find out what he's checking for, because he's going to bring something back to the table with the chief speaker of the nation of Israel in Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. But before we read that, uh, Sister Curtis, look on that handouts. And see, can anybody kind of tell me who these Galatians is? Let's look at see can, uh, one of these papers up here. We won't know exactly what's going on. Let's see what we, what's going on here before we read go the book of the Galatians. What does it say from the top? Israel and the Gentiles, yes. Moise, magnify my office. Yeah. So, rephrases Paul taught Europeans. So, 
Apostle Paul, who he's taught who? Europeans. Europeans. What, let's name a couple of Europeans that he taught. Who he oh, taught? Yeah. The Romans. So, the Ro so when we read the book of the Romans, who is he addressing the letter to? Rome. The Europeans, the huh? Europeans, right. Go ahead and read some more. Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Galatians. Oh, so now we're getting ready to read the Galatians right now. Mm -hmm. So now so now we're getting ready to read the book. That's, that's good enough. But go ahead and finish it up anyway. Philippians. Mm -hmm. Thessalonians. Yes. All these people were white Europeans. So right. all these people was white Europeans. Right. So now right. Apostle Paul, Saul, saw in English. Now, the book of Galatians, he had wrote a letter to them. Let's see what he said in 2 verse 11. But keep one thing in your mind, Paul is talking to Europeans. That's right. And right. 2 11, what did he say? Brother Galatians 2 11. But when Shimon was come to Antioch, I withstood him in the face. Yes. Because he was to be blamed. Go ahead. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Goim. So he was eating with the Goim, the sons of Japheth. Right. So he was over there in Antioch eating with the Goim. Mm -hmm. Hold that point. <laughs> Hold that point. Oh, Brother A. Taylor. <laughs> let's find out. Let's find out exactly where, where he coming from. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to... Well, you know, right now, when we were to go eat now, we we want to come back and tell you, you bring the plate where we come from. Oh, yeah. We won't tell you everything about it now. But yeah. look, what, look, look what's going on in 11th chapter, verse 1. It, Acts chapter 11, verse 1, what does it say? Chapter 11, verse 1. This book do a lot of talking. All we got to do is turn some pages. Chapter 11. Verse number 1, what's going on here? And the apostles said, brethren that were in Judea heard that the Goings had also received the word of YHWH. Oh, so the, the brothers that was in Israel, That's right. they yeah. heard that it was, it, was, it was some word that was passed on to the sons of Japheth. That's right. Huh? Yeah. Right. And Europeans. they had received the word. And what happened next? Two. And when Shimon was come up to Jerusalem. So when he come to Israel, what happened? They that were of the circumcision contended with him. So they that's of the raw genetic Israelites contended with him. That's right. And what did they say to the chief speaker of the nation of Israel in verse 3? Saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised and did eat with them. Wait a minute now. Yeah. So, so this is the reason why he getting jittery because if we just got to... They just got through jumping you for, for right. what you were just doing, and you read back at it again. Right. He said, right. look at this. Saying, thou went into men's uncircumcised, uncircumcised, and done what? Eat with Eat. them. Well, wait a minute now. Let's go back up to verse number one and find out what is the name of these men uh -oh. that he went to and ate with. Verse one again. And the apostles... And the brethren that were in Israel heard that the Goings had also received the word of YHWH. So what means we talking about uncircumcision? The Goings. Oh, son of Yes. And furthermore, done what? In verse 3? <laughs> eat with them. <laughs> Can't even eat with them. <laughs> and you're at with them. Don't <laughs> right. You know what he said? That's right. right. And it gave them a furthermore. Mm -hmm. And did eat with them. Right. right. With them. Oh, right. but now you know them. Right, yeah, you can see. Right. <laughs> Verse number four, 11 four, and what happened next? Right. But Shimon rehearsed the matter from the beginning mm -hmm. and expounded it by order unto them, saying. So he rehearsed the matter, mm -hmm. and because he knew his life was on the line right. for what he just got through doing. Right. And all we can read that he did was <laughs> give him some them. word and, and eat, eat with them. Eat with them. Now, this what we read in this right here. Right. Huh? It's right there. That's right. And That's they right. contended with him. Let me argue with him. Yes, they right. did. They said, you, <laughs> Shimon, right. you went into men's on circumcised and did eat with them. Right. Yeah. Huh? That's right. So, but then, now after they, after you, after you explained that real good, right. now we all the way over in the Galatians, and we try to figure out, well, what happened? Uh, uh, <laughs> Chief speaker of the nation of Israel. Right. It's like right. you're going to repeat yourself, ain't you? 
Right. Let's see what's going on now. Now that's the possum and the brothers that was in, in Israel, right? Right, right. Now we in 212 again. Let's read 212 again, uh, brother uh, Singerton. 212. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the going. Yeah. Right? But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself. Right. Fearing them which were of the circumcision. Well, he's fearing them was Israelites. Right. So oh, why did he fear them? Because what black what black their back on him right. is this council meeting. That's right. right. He said, wait a minute, they don't caught me again. Right. Mm -hmm. So I talked my way out of this one. Let me see what he do on this one. Now, now, what happened in verse 13? 13. And the other Israelites dissembled likewise with him. So now he had a crowd with him, and when they seen the brothers that's coming out of Israel again, which was uh, Apostle Saul and Barnabas, they dissembled themselves. They broke out running. You imagine you sitting in a restaurant. Right. Now, <laughs> uh, Brother Wood is sitting in the restaurant, and Brother Kevin, then Brother Singleton, right. just walk in there, and all of a sudden you'd be ready to say something to them, and they break out running. Right. What's going on here? What y'all running for? Right. Right. They broke out running. We're going to find out what they're running for. 14. Verse 14. 14. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. Oh, that's the reason. Because they was not walking upright according to the truth of the gospel. Because these Israelites, as you are Israelites, right. told you the stranger be. Right. See, so you forgot about what he had written. No, as yeah. you are. As that you means are. you don't make no adjustment to nobody That's when it right. comes down to this. That's right. That's right. They got to be as you or the boat don't roll. Okay. That's right. You see what's going on here? That's so right. now, again, he's making an adjustment to the truth of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And now, Shimon is caught in the throat of this. And let's see what Saul says to him. And that's who the I is. Go ahead. I said unto Shimon. What would I say? Before them all. And so, so otherwise, I front them all. I went and got the ones that ran out in the back, do the side. We got them all together. Mm. And then I waited to say to them all, what? <laughs> if thou being an Israelite. Well, if, if thou being an Israelite, the mm. peoples of the book. Well, live us after the manner of the going. And you live not the manner of the sons of Japheth. And you, not well, as wait, the wait, Israelites. Wait a minute. Let, let, me, let me hit a little bit of this. <laughs> let me hit a little bit of this. <laughs> so wait a minute now. Yeah. You, you got a nice position. Right. Yeah. right. And now you don't put yourself where you in arm's length right. or getting into moving on up. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And now you don't jump into and then you wonder what happened when they put a side out and they moving out. Let's right. find out what is the whole purpose of this thing here? I got to stop here. Because mm -hmm. that Ruach want me to go somewhere and find a rabbit out of that. All right. Sister Curtis, let's see if we go to Hosea. Let's see if we find out exactly what's going on here. I got to go to Hosea and kind of peep in Hosea. Maybe we can come up with an answer to this right here. Hosea chapter 8, verse number 8-8. Eight, eight. See, we get an answer to what's going on. Hosea 8, 8. Israel is swallowed up. Yeah. Now shall they be among the goings, rephrased as the Gentiles, oh, man. as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. See, this Israelite <laughs> is a, like a vessel. See, you like a vessel. Oh, Otherwise, when you move in, Israelite, right. Right. and you, you have done all you can to get away from the truth. And then all of a sudden you see a sign out saying, I'm glad you moved next door to me, but why you got a sign saying you get ready to move? Well, it ain't me. You know, my husband said that. Right, right. Then you ask your husband, why you going to move? Oh, it ain't me. It's my wife said that. <laughs> and next you know, you see both of them gone. Right, and right. everybody around tied in. Oh, yeah. This Israelite, this man is not going to let no, let you assimilate with anybody but what you agree with. Wow. So this is what happened to this Israelite. Right. See, this Israelite needs to know this. I don't care where you get to Israelite, this can reflect back on you. You got to lead on what he gave you is this wow. word. That's and right. you seek and try to be around the sons of Ham, the sons of Japheth. Right. But when you get there, you is as a vessel with no pleasure. Wow. That means, for example, when you want to go to the movies, all of a sudden you get to the movies. 
The next you know, the people in the movie, they have made another movie somewhere else. You look at them and see, you, then you won't know what happened then. You it build a big shopping mall. Right. Then you look around, and right. they'll move another one. Right. Mm. This is what I got to understand something. You got a job to do. <laughs> and I'm not going to let you break my Torah. Right. Right. I'm not going to let the baseball right. settle in with you. Their job is to whoop you back to your agreement. Right. And right. what is your agreement? Let's go back, uh, Brother Kevin. Let's run back all the way up to Exodus chapter 19. See, this Israelite got something on the table, and nobody won't read nothing to this Israelite. He's he trying to figure out why when I got money, why, what happened. Right. What happened to this Israelite? You don't remember the agreement. Right. Exodus chapter 19. What the man say he did for you? Verse 3, what did he say? 19.3. 19.3. And Moshe went up unto YHWH, and YHWH called him out of the mountain, saying, What did he say? Thus shalt thou say to the house of Israel, and tell the children of Israel, For have you seen what I did to the uh, Mizraim? Yeah, you seen what I done to the sons of Ham? And how I bear you on eagle wings. And I bear to you on eagle wings, come on. And brought you unto myself. And I brought this Israelite to myself, come on. Five, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Why? For the earth is mine. So the earth is mine, come on. Six, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests yes. and a holy nation. Uh -huh. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. See, this Israelite job is to be a kingdom of priests. This was the agreement you made. And look what you said after he told you all that. What did you say? Continue. Seven, and Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all the words which YHWH commanded him. Uh -huh. Eight, and all the people answered together and said, all that YHWH has spoken, we will do. But, but did he want to speak? <coughs> did he say, as you are, they strange for thee? That's right. Didn't That's he right. speak that? Do so how is you being like, uh, 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 follow what he, all he say, <laughs> right. he said, as you are, they got to be. That's right. right. Huh? That's right. So That's now, right. if that's the case, then when you got your big, your big, uh, your, your, your nest egg, right. the last thing you both made to move, you made. Wow. How is you being like, I wow. told you to be? Right. I right. say, your job is to teach this word. Yeah. Let's read that, uh, mm. Sister Curtis is run to Malachi 2, 7, and Brother A. Taylor, I be in Numbers 23, verse 9, waiting on you. Malachi 2, verse 7. Malachi <clears throat> 2, 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Okay, you need to keep knowledge. We know, we understand that. But let's see how do, do he obtain knowledge. Go ahead. And they should seek the Torah, the phrases of law, at his mouth. Oh, so you don't supposed to be in, in nobody institution trying to learn anything. Right, right. Huh? You got to seek what he got to say, and he ain't in nobody's camp. Mm. Let's read that before we read this, uh, brother Singleton. Let's see if we read. Let's go to. Let's go back to um, the book of the Israelites. Let's see if we read a little bit of that. See, the whole world out of order because this raw genetic bloodline Israel is out of order. Right. He's not finding nothing in this book. Right. Nothing right. in this book. Look what, look what this man is saying in the 13th chapter. Let's look what he says in verse number 10. 13, 10, what does it say? 13, 10. We have an altar. Yeah. Where, whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. Uh-huh. Mm. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin, mm -hmm. are burned without the camp. So everything is done without the camp, come on. Wherefore, YHWH the son also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. So now he was outside of the norm, mm -hmm. meaning that everything that you have to do is outside of the norm. That's right. You want to mm -hmm. brag about you went to this great university. Can't go to that, you can't do that. Why H would give you this information and he right. would not send remember everything he done was outside of the camp. Right. Remember, he came into 
the temple to teach him what he needs to know. Everything he right. taught was outside of the camp. Mm, right. He didn't teach inside the camp. And look what we're doing. We're going inside the camp <laughs> and try to learn something. That's and right. you just broke the protocol by doing it that way. Right. You got to go outside of the camp to get this information, right. not at no institution. So you can put all, all your degrees down as you want them. Mm. You just yeah. broke the royal law on how you receive information. Mm. Now, Sister Curtis, let's find out how you receive information anyway. Mm. Let's go to uh, the chief speaker of the nation of Israel, Shimon. Shimon. We're going to go to second Shimon, second Peter. Mm -hmm. So I hope you can, TV, can keep up with voices of the true Israelites. And we're going to show you exactly why we do what we do. And Brother Kevin had me um, Isaiah 28, verse um, 8. Now make it, yeah, Isaiah, Isha, y'all, 28, verse 9, waiting on me. But I'm going to go and take, what I said I was going to just a minute ago? Second Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to see how did the chief speaker of the nation of Israel receive the word. Let's see, did he receive it into any institution? So they asked you a question, well, where did you learn this from? Where you go? Let's see what the chief right. speaker of the nation of Israel say. Let's see him answer this question. And the second, Shimon, second Peter. Peter 1, verse 19. 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. So, so this, but where you find prophecy back is from Malachi going all the way back to Genesis. Come on. That's right. Where unto? You do well that you take heed mm -hmm. as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Go ahead. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So it's no private interpretation about this word. You, you just got to go by his protocol to receive his word. Wow. It's not the yep. brother Bennett some great big institution. Right. Now we can show you how you receive his word. 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. So it didn't come by the will of man. Somebody put up a great big mm. building and he taught you what he feel and what he think. <laughs> how did they get it? But holy men of wise WH spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. that's right. how they got this Spirit. word. Yeah, right. They Holy got Spirit. this word as they spake as they was moved mm. by the what? The Holy oh, Spirit. Well, we need to find what this Holy Spirit is then. Yeah. Once we found this Holy Spirit, we we in good shape then. Right. So right. this is how they receive this word. That's right. They speak as they were moved Ooh. by the Holy Spirit. That's right. Let's get a brother that was moved, uh, Brother Kevin. Let's, let's run to Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah. Yeah, let's see if we get back to Jeremiah chapter 20. And let's find out exactly how you get moved by the Spirit. Spirit. Let's see, can we run down how do this spirit moves you? Right. Let's look right at down verse number 20, verse 7. 20, verse 7. O wise WH, thou hast deceived me. Yes. And I was deceived. Uh -huh. Thou art stronger than I. I has prevailed and has prevailed. I am in des derision, derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. See, everybody, everybody gonna mock you. Say, so where are you getting this stuff from? We read around the same book that you got. Go ahead. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil, because the word of wise WH was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. That means you mean this word? This word gonna be a reproach to you. You go back and tell your mama that your yeah, daddy right. you ain't going past the stars, moon, and sky, and they look at you. What? So you got to you gotta keep. Sabbath day when the sun go out on Friday, the sun go out on Saturday, and we keep first day of the week. First nine, make it plain. Mm -hmm. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. But but didn't now look now, I'm for Pete's sake, I'm just gonna go there, I'm just gonna be quiet. Be chill. Go ahead. Nor speak any more his name. And I'm not gonna use the name no more. I'm gonna go with the flow. I'm gonna use the name to go with the flow. Matter of fact, let's look at this name that you're gonna use that's going to flow. Oh, Sister Curtis, look up there and see if you find me some uh, some good Jesus. And I won't see anything pertaining to some good Jesus and what is good Jesus pertaining to. Let's see if you find anything based upon good Jesus. I think Brother A. Taylor got a, a good, just read anything pertaining to good Jesus. What you got there, Brother A. Taylor? Uh, Jesus. 
the YHWH of the Old Testament. Oh, so good Jesus is the YHWH of the Old So when you see the word Jesus, that's who? YHWH of the Old Testament. That's YHWH of the Old Testament. Wow. That's who good Jesus is. <laughs> YHWH of the Old Testament. That's right. So yeah. now, to right. move on, uh, go down to the next era and tell me what the next era says. Please ponder the following scripture which proved that YHWH was heard in Old Time Testament. So the, in Old Testament was YHWH. That's the only name that was heard. Mm -hmm. The one you call the good Jesus is YHWH. That's right. I'll pull another page back. Let's see what, let's see what we can pull a rabbit out of here. What you got? Maybe you can come up with something that makes a little sense here. More sense. Mm. What you got there? Uh, not until the 17th century did the usage became universal in the English book. In yeah, the not until the 17th century, what? In the King James Bible of 1611, for example, the word Jesus and judge are invisibly Aishas. Aishas. Okay. Okay. So we know one thing, that we don't have a good Jesus at what time? Uh, 17th, 17th, 17th so century. We'll leave it like that. That's good enough. So we don't have the good Jesus. So you know a lot of times we say you're looking at the good Jesus. Right. We don't have the good Jesus until the uh, 1700s. That's right. that's right. Now look at that. Go ahead, Brother A. Taylor, go ahead. After the development of the letter J, the Savior's name was changed by the translators to Jesus, mm. but continued to be pronounced, which like the letter Y. However, the pronunciation of J soon changed completely from the former Y-E -Y sound to our present J U mm. through the French influence. So so wow. so Sons of J really Fat Day. French, huh? But go back and read that first <laughs> literature again and let's read about the good Jesus one more time from the top. Go back to that first. But what they said about the good Jesus there. Mm. The Jesus, the YHWH of the Old Testament. Oh, so so that is the YHWH of the Old Testament. <laughs> Old Testament. Now what you gonna do with that? Can't yeah. Do right. And, and we read Proverbs said on I had that on text. That yeah. is the Y H W. So when you oh, see the word yeah. Jesus. It's Y H W H the Old Testament. Now, this? Sister Curtis, let's go and see them quote. Since we know he's the Y H W H of the Old Testament. That's right. And matter of fact, brother Kevin, pick up that hand now where it says Y H W H, and I want to find out what language they were speaking in anyway. Let's find what language they were speaking in anyway. Uh, I want to know what language. Turn back a couple pages to see what language were they speaking in anyway. Because I want to pull a rabbit out of head on this. So you're going to find out what language they were speaking in. Do we say anything about the, uh, the language they were speaking in? The Lord God was in one language, then we come to something. We got anything based on see what language they were speaking in? Is anything pertaining to what language they were speaking in? Mm -hmm. uh, Not right now? No, not I, right have now. A, I have some information on that. <laughs> right well, I, I need to know what language they were speaking in. Go ahead. Uh, they were speaking in Latin. Okay, well, no, I want to, I want to go past Latin because Latin we know got the IEs and 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 heading toward Jesus. I want some saying, uh, uh, what language they were speaking in, the, the the writers of the book were speaking in. We can't find nothing on that right now. We can't find nothing mm -hmm. said, uh, English Lord God Hebrew Y H W H. We can't find nothing said, Brother Kevin. Uh, uh, English, yeah. Okay, we, can we find something to say, Brother Kevin? <laughs> Let's right. start from the top again. English. English. Lord God. Israelite. Israelite. Y-H-W-H. Oh, so Y-H-W-H. So now, Sister Curtis, let's run over and see can we get a case in point in Acts chapter 26. Can we get a case in point? Acts chapter 26. Let's see can we get us a case in point in the 26th chapter. And we look at um, uh, Apostle Paul talking to Italians, because they was in control. King Agrippa had to be Italian. <coughs> some mm. say he's a Greek. Well, well, sons of Japheth, we know that much. 2613, let's see what's going on. 2613, Acts. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven. Yes. Above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, mm -hmm. and them which journey with me. <clears throat> 14. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Shemitic, rephrases Hebrew tongue. So, so what tongue were they speaking in now? 
in the Semitic rephrase is Hebrew. Now, now I want you to read these words exactly the way it is in verse 15, and mm. we're we going to catch somebody red-handed with the canary in their mouth. Mm. Verse 15, read exactly what it says. Now, he's speaking in Semitic tongue, That's and right. they got Hebrew, right? That's right. And look what they got in verse 15. Now, we found the word Lord God. And we found out that Jesus mean YHWH, right? In the Old Testament. Let's see, right. let's see can we read it all read in verse 15. As is in the Hebrew. What words it got in place of it? And I said, who art thou, Lord? Well, ain't no Lord in the, ain't no Lord in the Hebrew tongue. No. Nope, right. So now we know one thing. We read Lord God mean YHWH, right? That's right. And what's the next word? And he said, I am Jesus. And we found out that the Jesus of the Old Testament is YHWH. So right. we just caught you red-handed and to the word right. red here. Right. So we know the word Jesus, the Lord, and the God all means one name, YHWH. Right. Right. You see what we just found out on the way to find out something? Caught a right. See, now, look at we caught, caught, now somebody is a liar. That's Who right. put this in there? They is a liar. Right? Right. Now, right. I'm going to show you another liar they are putting on in the book while we already there. All right. Sister Curtis. <laughs> Go to 13 chapter. Let me show you another lie that they'll put yeah. right in your book, right before your eyes in 13 chapter. Mm. Remember, let's read uh, Brother Kevin. Let's back up. Before we read this, let's read uh, Matthew chapter 12. I'm going to show you another lie that right before your eyes, and we're going to find out your outcome. We're going to let you know, you keep doing it. You don't correct it. This is what you got coming. All right. Mm. Let's go to mm. Matthew chapter 12. Look at verse 31. 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Yes. But blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. Uh-huh. 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be, forgi be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world Neither in the world to come. Now look, now look what you put yourself into. So if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, you ain't got no, nothing coming in this world or the world, world to come, to right? Come. That's right. Verse That's 36 right. and 37, what does it say? But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. So every idle word, you're going to give account. Huh? That's right. Stop now what you say in verse 37? Now make it plain, Brother Kevin. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You see what's going on now? So mm. now if the Holy Spirit make a statement, and you blaspheme against the truth, you ain't got nothing coming in this world or the world coming. That's what he said, right? That's what he said, right? Huh? That's what, that's now, right. we're going to see something. Now, a lot of people got this word stuck in their throat. Right. And we go on to the 13th chapter. Mm. Now, Sister Curtis, I want you to kind of work me, with me a little bit. Go up to Acts 12 and look at verse 25. I'm looking for something. I want to get me two witnesses first. Acts chapter 12, last verse in 25, what it say? Acts 12, <clears throat> verse 25 says, And Barnabas... And Saul returned from Jerusalem. What is their name? Barnabas and Saul. Okay, good. Back up to the ninth chapter, Sister Curtis. Mm. Now, keep that in your mind, what you just got through reading. Barnabas and Saul, right. Keep that in your mind now. Look what it says here in the ninth chapter. Right. Let's see what Ananias said in verse number 11. He's speaking to the one made to heaven and earth. 9-11. 9-11. Yeah, Acts 9-11. And the Creator said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, yeah. and inquire in the house of Yehuda, rephrases Judah, for one called Saul, a Tarsus, for behold, he prayed. What's his name? Saul. All right. Skip down to verse 17, and what did he say? Mm. And Ananias went his way, and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul. What did he call him? Saul. Come look, keep that in your mind now. Now let's go back to 13 chapter. Verse number 2. 13 2, what it say? 13 2. As they ministered to the father, 
and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. What did the Holy Spirit call him? Saul. Good. Skip down to verse 7. Make it plain. 13.7. Which was with the de deputy of the country, Saragus, Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul. What their name? Barnabas and Saul. Great. And desired to hear the word of YHWH. Now, watch yourself now. Verse 9, make it plain. Then Saul, who also is called Paul. Wait a minute. He's also called what? Oh. Well, where you get that from? <laughs> you don't know. Where you get that from? Where did you get that word from? Do it in there. Just do the word up in there. You see what happened here? Right. Oh. Go ahead. Finish up. Fill with Filled what? Fill with the Holy Spirit. But if you blaspheme the Spirit, you ain't got nothing coming. Nope. You see what they done did? Right. Just right put this word, Paul, right, right before your eyes. The Holy Spirit said one right thing. Again. Let's wrap this up. And just catch up in part two. Let's get one for the for the for the run. Right. Let's run first. One and get me Ephesians chapter four, and let's pick up verse seventeen through nineteen, and we'll check this out, and we'll take on another break. First one get Ephesians, Ephesians chapter four, 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 seventeen through nineteen. 17. Read it. Read right. it quick. Um, this I say therefore and testify in the YHWH Go ahead. that ye henceforth walk not as others. Go in, walk in the vanity of their mind. Stop right there. They walk in the vanity of their mind. We'll stop right here. Old your host, Brother Cabin. Another we'll catching part two. Stella, Stella, Stella show. And thank you for tuning in. For any questions or comments, you can give us a call at 773-737-3539 or 773-469-8884. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. 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 shalom.